Hanukkah means dedication in Hebrew, and the Jewish holiday, also known as the Festival of Lights, represents joy. It's celebrated by an eight-night display of dancing flames atop candles held in menorahs, conveying warmth, comfort, and in Hanukkah's case, a miracle. Raleigh Woodworth is a local Jewish mother, and she's here today to share some of her favorite Hanukkah traditions while also explaining the need for inclusivity and support amongst faiths in our community. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to you. So let's talk a little bit about your Hanukkah traditions and what Hanukkah means to you and how you celebrate with your family. I have two little kids that are growing up in this community and they see Christmas here, there, and everywhere. So this time of year, we celebrate both Christmas and Hanukkah. And for them, Hanukkah is extra special because it's their time to really learn about something new, but also to get presents, which <laughs> children love. Right. Some of our traditions are centered around that family time, the togetherness, and the way we do so is we make sure that every night of Hanukkah we light the menorah together. Now, my children are five and three, so you don't necessarily want them playing with fire, <laughs> yeah. but it's a really great way to teach them how to handle it safely. Yeah. So each night of Hanukkah, you light an additional candle. So on the first night, you light one, the next night two, et cetera. But we don't just light our candles with a lighter or a match. We light what's called the helper candle or the shamash first. So I light that candle, and then I pass it to each of them, and they pass it to one another and light all the candles as a group. They love it. They fight over who gets how many candles. But also, as you're lighting them, we, by we, I mean me, uh, sing not well, but the Hebrew prayer that we say over the candles every night, kindling the lights of Hanukkah. And then we do presents because it's a celebration. Now, we try our best not to do huge presents every night because that's not what Hanukkah or Christmas or anything should really be about. Right. So on the first night, we do something smaller, and then we build up to the eighth night. So. I've done Hanukkah t-shirts one night, we did water bottles another night, though they did get an extra special present from their grandparents this year. It's a Hanukkah robot named <laughs> Judah Maccabot. It was available on Amazon. Maccabot like Maccabee? Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yes. This is, it's a hilarious little item. It sings, it spins around, and the songs it sings is the Hora, which is traditional, and dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I, I made it out of clay. Exactly. And when it's dry and ready, a dreidel I will play? Nailed it. Got it. Yes, I will get you one for next year. <laughs> okay. They're actually all sold out on Amazon right now, so Judah Maccabot, he was a hit, all total right. hit. So let's talk a little bit more about um, some of the maybe struggles you have in celebrating Hanukkah too with your kids in a community that is not where you are, where that's really like in some ways a marginalized mm -hmm. community. The Jewish congregations here in Sioux Falls are wonderful places to grow up. I myself am somebody who benefited from such. But it is a very small community and at times has been a very targeted community. And it's not necessarily something you hear a lot about. And that's largely by design. Unfortunately, the Jewish community has found that when issues start arising and they become more public, more issues happen, which seems so backwards that mm -hmm. when you're shedding a light on something that then there's a response and assistance and help, and there is. Our law enforcement community and our community partners and the general public on the majority are wonderful. But they're like anywhere, there's a few bad eggs and mm -hmm. it exacerbates problems. So you don't often hear about when swastikas are drawn on the side of our synagogue or anti-Semitic stickers are posted around down Sioux Falls, but those things happen here. Yeah, they're happening now. They're happening now. And that's scary as a Jewish person, but it's really scary as a Jewish mother who wants to teach her children about the beauty of Hanukkah, but the religion as a whole and wants them to feel comfortable sharing and being a part of that community. And so it's a fine line to walk of making sure your kids feel safe to go and talk about Hanukkah, but also not exposing them to potential danger. I hate to even admit it, but there are frequently times that I don't attend Jewish events in this community with my children or at all because of that fear. And that's not how it should be. My kids are young, but my five-year-old is getting older, and so we are starting to have more of those conversations because I don't want her to ever feel like being different is weird or not okay. 
I want her to be proud of them. And I was actually with her kindergarten class this morning, and we brought in little mini dreidels and then Hanukkah gelt to play mm -hmm. with the dreidel game. And she was so excited. She wanted to do it right away, which you can't do in kindergarten. There's a regimen. Right. And so I brought it up to her teacher and explained what it was for. And she's like, oh, yes, Davis already told me all about it. And she goes, she was kind of confused at the beginning of the week because she kept telling her friends and even people working there, Happy Hanukkah, just like you would say Merry Christmas. And people were just apparently looking at her funny or were not saying it back. And for her, she was very confused as to why nobody would say it back. And that breaks your mama heart that your child feels like, huh, I'm trying to celebrate something and share joy and it's not being reciprocated. So the conversation then becomes, well, we are a small population, but we have a great message and it's a very inclusive religion and it's a celebration of all these things and we'll go in and we'll talk about Hanukkah. Let's teach your friends, let's teach your classmates because kids never stop talking. So if we go in and we talk to your classmates, they go home and they share it with their family. And that's the beauty of it. That's how you educate people. That's how you inform people. And that's how you make it more inclusive. So it's a conversation that is really just starting in my household by way of my child. But it's something that's... And it's a conversation that we can have, all of us, because I Correct. don't need to be Jewish to have a conversation with my kids about the importance of Hanukkah. Absolutely. And before we're out of time, let's talk a little bit about an event happening on the last day of Hanukkah. The community has seen a lot of anti-Semitic activity lately, and so some... Um, faith organizations are coming together to have a vigil and a night to celebrate. Correct. So coming up on December 5th, which is Sunday evening, that's the last night of Hanukkah, mm -hmm. the eighth and final evening, starting at 4 p.m., there will be a candlelight vigil that is bringing together people of all faiths and the entire community to come together to say that no matter who you are, what you believe in, what you represent, we're together. Hate has no place in this community. And I'll have the details online too. Thank you so much for Thank you joining for me. me. We'll, um, I'll see you there at the video. That Thank sounds you. wonderful. Thank you so much.